Oh, You Thought Podcast, the place where you get a heavy dose of positivity, sarcasm, knowledge, and ratchetness. Enjoy the show. Love and happiness. Yeah. Something that can make you do wrong, make you do right. It's that time, y'all. It's that time. Hopefully, with me starting with the song, they won't cut my podcast off. But that was Al Green, Love and Happiness, one of the best albums ever. Ever, but I wanted to to start the podcast to kind of set the tone for some topics that I'm going to talk about today. And so, first, I would like to say welcome to episode 39 of Oh You Thought Podcast. I didn't do an episode last week, and I'll tell you why a little bit later in the show. My name is Fallon and I'm coming to you from Houston, Texas and basically we're almost upon one year of me doing my baby, my podcast. So what, three months from now in April, it will officially be a year when I launch my podcast. Hopefully I'll be able to do something really nice and big to celebrate that moment, but as of right now... Welcome to the show. First off, I want to give a shout out to my SoundCloud listeners. And, you know, I'm giving them shout outs because, number one, they're special. Number two, they give me feedback. Number three, I can see where these people are listening from and they're consistent, especially in my top five. And... Yeah, so if y'all will start to email me or just talk to me on Instagram, Twitter, or leave me messages on my website, I'll give you shout outs too. And so the top five cities um, for this week that I want to mention from SoundCloud, number one, Las Vegas, hold it down. Number two, San Francisco is consistently listening to me on SoundCloud. I appreciate it. Number three, a new one, um, Singapore. Number four, another consistent city is London. You're always on my top five. Um, If any of you want to just personally like just hit me up and I'll give you a shout out with your name or whatever. I appreciate you listening all the way in London. And the last city that I want to give a shout out to this week is San Jose. And, you know, I'm going to be a little petty for a second. You know, I'm from Houston, you know, I'm from Texas. Where is my, where are my, my listeners from Houston? Where are my listeners from just Texas, period? Where are y'all at? Hold me down. Hold me down, people. And that's all I got to say. So we're going to go ahead and jump right on in because I feel like last week, I didn't, or two weeks ago, I didn't give y'all any of my little moments that I want to rant about. Oh, you thought that Genuine would not have the balls or the courage to deny a woman on national TV. And so this got a little traction or a big traction on Twitter, of course, because everyone's so judgmental and everyone's always in their feelings. And they attempted to try and and drag Genuine because he didn't want to be kissed by this this woman who is actually a transgendered woman. And, you know, that's your business. And my thing is this, if we're just looking at it, just a large scope and not the minor scope of this being a transgendered woman, large scope. If you're not attracted to someone, do you want them kissing on you? Uh, Do you want random people kissing on you in in this day and age where 
first of all, I'm a germaphobe, so I don't like random people kissing on me. So what if Genuine is a germaphobe? And of course he knew that she transitioned over to being a female. He didn't say anything bad about that. He was very playful with her. He just didn't want to be kissed. And that's okay. And I think the takeaway that we need to talk about from this, and I think Charlemagne from The Breakfast Club, I felt like he brought this up. And I was just like, he's totally right. When we're in the the too late or the Me Too generation where we have all these women coming out saying they have been sexually harassed or abused or raped or whatever the offense is and we're in support of people using their voice and speaking out against that well are we saying that men don't get sexually harassed like if genuine did not want to be kissed by this young lady that is his god-given right and it's nothing against the transgender community like i just feel like sometimes we just jump too far And sometimes, like, even, like, with race relations, we jump too far where, of course, we can't compare race relations to this this situation. But as far as, like, no means no or just a simple, like, oh, I don't want to play like that, that's valid. That's his personal space. And I think, like, if it's good for one person, it's good for all. We can't act like it's okay for us to stand up for all these women that have been sexually harassed and abused, but we want to laugh and ignore or burn them at the stake when it's men. I mean, sometimes it happens. It does happen. Like people don't understand boundaries sometimes. And this is just a simple case of people not understanding your personal space and boundaries. And I just think it was very, very unfair how people tried to come for Genuine. Oh, you thought that Walmart wouldn't give their employees a raise and a bonus. But but y'all, you know, when you just out here giving away free money, there's always a catch and there's always a plot twist. And this is the plot t- twist. And so within that same week of giving raises and bonuses, they laid off a bunch of workers from the Sam Sam's Club franchise of Walmart. And it just kind of happened in the middle of the night for some of these people. They showed up to work and didn't have a job to go to. And I just think like Walmart is such a cash cow. They get all the money. I just think, why is it so hard to treat your employees so good when you have all this money? You make all this money. It's guaranteed money. People are always going to going to go to Walmart. And number one, you don't have enough workers. And any given time I can go into Walmart unless it's like early, early, early in the morning. But anytime after early, early, early in the morning, there's always a line. And sometimes you don't want to check yourself out. And I just think it's unfortunate how Walmart treats their employees. And as a former Walmart employee, like, you just, you couldn't pay me enough money really to go back there to deal with all these different kind of people. So it just, why would you not want to treat your employees well and good and why would you just lay them off after giving people raises and bonuses? Like, I just feel like you don't treat people like that. But karma is real for everybody. Oh, you thought that Circuit City was just like a thing of the past. I know like a lot of you young people, you don't understand all these different different stores we used to be able to go to to get music and electronics and Circuit City was that place for me personally. Like on Fridays when new music would come out, I was there with my allowance money or my hard-earned money that I, I made from my first job at Fuddruckers, Burger King. I was at Circuit City getting my CDs together, getting cameras and other electronics like CD players. Like we used to use CD players, people. And so they're bringing them back. Um, 
they're bringing back the actual stores. Like, they're not doing, like, an online thing. Like, they're bringing back the stores. And so I'm definitely interested in seeing how that's going to play out and if they will survive. Because you, you're definitely going to have to have a plan to survive if you're bringing back the stores, like, during, you know, a time where everyone likes to buy online, everybody wants something right now. Like, what are they going to bring to the table to intrigue people? Oh, you thought, this is a good one, y'all, that African Americans actually liked, like Trump, per Donald Trump. Unemployment for black Americans is the lowest ever record recorded, okay? Trump approval ratings with black Americans has doubled. Thank you, and it will get even much better. He said that it will get even much better. Where about? Where about? Like, I just want to know, like, where about? Who are we talking about? What African Americans are out here rolling with Trump besides Ben Carson, Omarosa's off that train? Like, it's probably like a point zero 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 half percent of African Americans that roll with Trump. Like, he's so delusional. And I told myself I was not going to talk about Trump on this episode, but I just thought, man. This was too good not to mention. Like, y'all better get y'all president because he's out here definitely wilding. Oh, you thought that Kim Kardashian did not have the time to clap back at Lamar Odom. And I just thought this was just really, really good because, you know, it's one of those situations where you're in a relationship And you want to act like your butt is just clean. You don't stink. You know what I mean? And you got a lot of dirt on you. But you out here in these public streets talking about your ex for no reason. Like, even like when the media asks you about your ex, just be, be, have some class. I'm looking for the right word. Have some dignity. Like, she was there for you when you almost died. That doesn't count for anything. And so this is what Lamar Odom had the audacity to say about Khloe Kardashian, which is actually like my favorite Kardashian. Um, And I like her because I feel like because the media has been so hard on her as far as how she looks and her her weight and everything. And she's always just taking everything like a champ. And I definitely also admire, like, her current, like, work ethic as far as, like, working out every day and stuff. Like, for someone that struggles with trying to lose weight and stay on a plan, like, seeing her work out every day, like, it's motivation. And just seeing where she was and how her body is now, it's definitely motivation. But this is what Lamar Odom had to say about Chloe. He said, I knew my marriage to Chloe was over when she was on her second or third NBA player. And Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian West, why was I struggling with that word, uh, responded on Twitter or second or third brothel. And this is a dig at Lamar because when he was on his deathbed, basically, uh... He was found at a brothel. And so, you know, like you just shouldn't be sh- you shouldn't be throwing like stones and you're living in a glass house type of thing. And I just thought it was pretty hilarious to me. Um, so, yeah. So, again, welcome to Oh You Thought Podcast. And this is what so most of y'all will hear this over the weekend And what have I been up to? Like, I've been busy, 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 working my ass off, still loving the new job, um, 
It's fast paced. It's always busy. I love to be busy. I don't like downtime and it's room for me to still grow. And so I'm still liking going to the new job. But the biggest thing that I want to talk about as far as why I didn't record last week um, it's because my little sister got married and that's why I played love and happiness because it was nothing but love and happiness that I saw between my little sister and my new brother-in-law. I won't say their names on the podcast because number one, I know my little sister is hella private. And so if she, if she listens to my podcast whenever they drop and she hears that I'm saying her name and her man's name, there's going to be some smoke in the city. And I just don't want that. And so, yeah. So my little sister got married and it was just so amazing to see this wedding that she basically put together. Um, Her man said basically he let her drive that wedding car and it was just beautiful. Her dress was beautiful. Me and my older sister and one of her friends, one of her best friends, um, we played um, during the, the wedding and you know, I want to give most of the credit to them, like 99% of the credit. Cause it's just like, I struggled to get ready for this, for this, um, performance because I hadn't played in a couple of years and I struggle with like eye issues. And so it's kind of tough for me to read the music and yeah, so that, and just my nerves, like my nerves, nothing else but my nerves, like having these people look at you and I'm playing timidly and bow issues. My strings kept just falling flat as far as not staying tuned. So I was having to tune my strings like every five minutes or have my older sister tune my strings every five minutes. So that was a fiasco for me. And so I'm glad it's over, but yeah, I, I didn't really talk about this with my sisters because I didn't want it to be an emotional thing. And I wanted to make sure that my sister had a, a great day. But I feel like I was emotional like the whole week of the wedding because I was just thinking about my dad and how I wanted so bad for my dad to be here to to walk his youngest daughter down the aisle. Um, it would have been a great moment for her. But I definitely want to say shout out to my cousin that that um, stepped up to, to walk my little sister down the aisle because, you know, I'm going to be honest because my honesty is going to be fair and I haven't said anything to this particular family member, but I think it's due and I probably won't say anything to this particular family member, but... Let me say this first. Let me address this because, you know, my younger sister shouldn't have to address this. And so as her older sister, I'm going to address this. And I'm just going to say this for anyone that's planning an event, planning a wedding. When people send you an RSVP, people, and you respond to that RSVP saying that you're going to come, you have X amount of months to change your mind and everything. This particular person is paying for this wedding. The majority. I'm going to say they're paying for the wedding themselves. And and so every person that RSVP'd and did not show up. Or decided that at the last minute you were not going to come. I understand certain things happen. Because we have certain things going on in the family with you know, a particular family member being sick. And so I understand those dynamics and that is not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about you definitely say you're coming and you don't come. And I would definitely say for our side of the family, we didn't come out strong enough for my little sister, in my opinion. And this was a a blessed event and everything. And number two, If you said you were going to walk my little sister down the aisle, confirm that you were coming, you were bringing a date and everything. And the day of, no one can get a hold of you. I take issue with that. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to try to move past this as 
fast as I can. My little sister is, is one of the people in the family that if you have an event, your kids have an event, and she's not busy, she's there. And why couldn't you show up for my sister? You know, and this is more than the person that was going to walk her down the aisle. These are the people that canceled at the last minute, the people that can, that asked about an invitation, the people that complained about not getting an invitation and everything, but you didn't show up. And our side of, you know, of the wedding party, as far as like, you know, you know, you have the bride side, the, the groom side and the church, it was a big difference. And that's all I'm saying. But guess what, boys and girls? The wedding was still amazing. She had somebody walk her down the aisle. And it was lovely. And now we have new additions to the family. Uh, The groom's family seems like a great family. A lot of fun. So the whole weekend, it it was fun and interesting. Meeting new people. Um... The, the bridal party dinner on Friday was was fun. Uh, different kind of food, jam on cornbread. <laughs> I didn't try it, but overall, to start the to set the tone for the wedding weekend, it was so much fun. Uh, Saturday was fun. Uh, we had a family dinner on Saturday night with um, some of the family from Louisiana, and that was super fun. And then Sunday was the wedding and it was just, I was so emotional when my sister came down the aisle. I just started crying because there again, I'm thinking about my dad walking her down the aisle and she just looked so beautiful and happy. And my little sister, like she's strong, like my mother, she's not a big crier. And so I didn't see her cry at all. I don't think during the wedding, unless I just missed it. But, um, her husband is a very, very nice man and he loves her. Um, the day of the wedding, he came to me and uh, we were talking a little bit. And I was like, are you ready? He was like, yeah, I'm ready. He's like, I've been ready. He's like, y'all don't understand. That's my baby. And it's just like, it's so nice to, to, to see a man care so much for a woman and to hear all the nice things that people say about him. And so it gives me more comfort. But I've already been a fan of his for a while based on their relationship and him moving to the Dallas area to be with her. And so that was definitely a major point that I've always liked about him. He's always seemed nice um, based on the things that, you know, I've heard from my sister. And so I'm definitely just wishing them nothing but the best. And yeah, I've never seen my little sister that happy and that like just open and, you know, she's my sister and stuff. So just to see her just be affect- affectionate and loving and caring with her husband, it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it was one of those things like, I'm a shy person. I never dance in front of people, but I danced pretty much the whole night. The floor was open and it was just fun, fun, like dancing with my my aunties, my mama, my sister, friends, new friends, my sister's friends, new family. It was just so much fun. It was like a classic black movie moment for a wedding. Like that's what it felt like. It was so much fun. So yeah, like even with that, like I said recently, like I don't even want to have a big wedding. I could just go to the, the courthouse and then have a nice reception. But seeing my sister's wedding, like it made me rethink it. Like if I'm blessed enough to meet someone that's ready to get married, get married, I think I want a small wedding like she did. And hers wasn't that small. So maybe I would do something a little bit smaller, but I want the nice venue. (laughs) I want the nice reception. Like I want all of that. And so it, it really just made me rethink all the things that I've been saying about marriage. And it's just like, girl, you almost 40, but you know, God is able and God is still in the business of blessing you. (laughs) And so it's like one of those things, like with the whole baby thing, like I've let it go. Like if it happens, it happens, 
but I really do. I want, I want a husband. I want to get married. I do want to have a baby. And if I can't have a baby, I want to adopt. So it's like all those things now that I'm putting out in the atmosphere for 2018, like just seeing there again, how happy, like, yes, I understand that there's still good relationship relationships out there, like good, healthy relationships and stuff. But just to see like your, your own blood, like your sister, someone close like that, be just so ultimately happy and blessed like my little sister is blessed and if she listens to this you know I've said this to you before like as your older sister I've always looked up to you just your your work ethic your your smartness your brain your you know you're not afraid to just live life to the fullest the things that I wish that I could just tap into a little bit more getting on a plane and going to Dubai, like you and your husband, you know, like, so I've always looked up to you and, you know, you make me proud and I feel like you've done a lot of things the right way. And that's why you've been so blessed and stuff. And so, so yeah, so let me just move on before I get too emotional. Like (laughs) even when I was giving the toast, I was like, I don't want to (laughs) cry. And she was like, well, don't. (laughs) And she was serious about that. But, um, so yeah, so that's what I did last week, last week, and and that's why I was so busy and couldn't drop a podcast, but hopefully this one will make up and we're going to have some good discussions and we're going to talk a lot about basketball, so just stay with it. A positive mind equals a positive life. When you let go of all the negativity, that is the ultimate glow up. It's time for the positivity moment of the show. Positivity, positivity moment of the show. I haven't said that in a while. Uh, I don't have a quote, but I think there again, like I feel like we're doing housekeeping business because it's the start of the year and I want to make sure you know, that we're doing things right. And I want to talk about the dynamics of having a good friendship. A friendship is not a one-way street. It's a two-way street between two people. And if you just want to take it further into a romantic relationship, just any kind of relationship, family relationship, like, but listen, I'm just going to talk about friendship. And so, like I said, I feel like it's just not a one-way street. You you shouldn't expect your friend to always be checking up on you and vice versa. It should be so seamless and easy that you don't even realize if you miss a beat. And this little memento came to my heart and my spirit after a situation with one of my friends. I'm not going to say his name. It's not my best friend, but it's definitely a really good friend new friend we've been friends for probably like over a year close to a year and uh, I sent him a text one day to see how he was doing how his mom was doing um and he responds basically like and I'm paraphrasing like girl like the angels must be looking out for you because if I didn't hear from you today I was going to let you have it. Something like that. Something along those lines. But the part about the angels, that was not a paraphrase. And I felt some type of way because there again, a relationship is a two way street. And no, like I'm not throwing shade at him because I confronted him about this. I basically said like, hey, you can't charge me up because I haven't heard from you either type thing. Right. And so the last communication that I had with him he didn't answer and I was talking to him. I had texted him to check on his mother and he didn't answer. And so for me, I feel like he told me what was going on. I'm like, okay, he's busy. He's he's worried about his mother. He has other things going on and he's working. And for me, like there again, I don't have a problem with giving people their space and having understanding. And so, and also I have my things going on and I think what people forget and fail to realize, and I think people really like, you just really need to realize this, like 
and I don't like to talk about it or whatever because in this in this scenario it doesn't matter but when I'm checking out and I don't talk to people this is what's going on I'm sick my too I'm a sickly person I'm a diabetic I have polycystic ovary syndrome and I have a chronic bad back and so I have all these things going on and so when I dip out sometimes it's that but as of lately I don't really talk to a lot of people because I'm working and yeah I'll send a text like hey how you doing but I'm just not the type of person I'm glued to my phone for social media and stuff like that to relax my mind let's get that clear and then number two like I I don't talk on the phone and this particular friend we don't talk on the phone we text and it's just like it's a two-way street it's not that I don't forget about people but sometimes I'm checking out just like you're checking out because you're living life and everything and I just want people to be mindful of that because there's a lot of relationships friendships that I hear the same kind of conversations on how a fight starts between your your good friends and I just you need to take inventory of yourself and have some understanding and you can't be the only one fostering any kind of relationship and The kind of relationship that I have with my best friend, he is the one person that gets the most out of me as far as talking on the phone. And the reason why he gets the most of me out of that is because I understand that that's his communication language. That's the way he prefers to communicate. And so, you know, I give up a part of myself to adjust to him because he has been there for me and he's earned that right for me to to give more of myself to him because he's such a great friend like he is family he is family and and so I'll talk to him every day just about on the phone and even though like my language of communication is texting for the most part he doesn't always answer my text like so Sometimes I would prefer if he would just give a little bit more of himself as far as texting me. But sometimes he he gets it and he does it. He can tell where I'm having a week, basically, where I'm just not feeling talking on the phone. So he's pretty good at that. And so that's just where it comes also with knowing the dynamics of the friendship, knowing who your friend is and knowing the type of person that your friend is. And not making them feel bad for who they are. And no, this particular friend that I started talking about at first, he didn't make me feel bad. It was nothing like that. We talked about it and it was fine. And so both parties in the friendship should have the feeling of completeness. Like I've always talked about relationships in the example of a bank account. You shouldn't feel overdrawn by a particular friend. It should be... You're good. Your bank account is good. Your checkings and your savings are good. And um, if you feel you are working to keep a friendship flowing, maybe you should evaluate that friendship and see if you need to let go of some friends or a relationship or stop dealing with some family members this year. And people always feel like it's a bad thing not to deal with family members you're associated by blood and we have these titles but sometimes you don't even talk to these people every day and with family I understand that still it makes you family even if you don't talk every day but I think we should just get away from the fact that we have to deal with people no matter who they are you don't have to deal with them they don't make you happy and I think once we start to figure that out we we need to stop just keeping up appearances just to have friends, a relationship, a man, a girl, like, just let it go. And I think, like, if you do that, you'll have a happier 2018. What's poppin'? What's poppin'?
I need to come up with a better way to say what's popping. Because I don't want to say like Cardi B. I want Cardi B to have her what's popping. Um, but I always feel like I, I come on here saying what's popping, what's popping. I need something a little bit better. Maybe I'll create a bumper for what's popping when I have time. Maybe, maybe. So, this is what's going on in these streets. Um, want to start with some some good news, and as far as the creative side of the world, um, Taraji P Henson is set to produce and star in a film about Emmett Till's life, and I hope the story the story goes all the way up into when the lady came out and confessed before she died that she lied about Emmett Till whistling at her or flirting with her, whatever they lied about on this young man. And I'm definitely interested in seeing how that show, I mean, how that movie flows and everything. I hope they do a good job of covering, number one, who was Emmett Till and really the day that happened with the, the lady and everything. So I'm pretty sure it would be a, a, a nicely done movie. I hope it's not like a lifetime movie. I hope it's like a major movie. Um, a guilty, a new guilty pleasure of mine. Um, I like the show Grownish. I was a little bit nervous to see how they were gonna do the show. Uh, but I knew since the writers are so good from Blackish that. Grownish had to be really good. And so I've seen the first couple of episodes. I'm behind, I think, an episode. I think there's only been three episodes, I think. So I'm behind. But I was impressed thus far. And I used to watch this show called The American Teenager's Life or something. I don't remember. It was a long title. But Adrian from that show is... uh playing the young lady's roommate and I'm just like girl how old are you to be playing like you in college but I guess I mean she doesn't look old but there again she was playing a high school student like how many years ago and now she's supposed to be like a freshman in college but whatever but it's a really good show so if you're not watching Grownish, watch it I believe it comes on Wednesday on Freeform. So, yeah, get your life together. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about that made my spirit and my musical heart happy. PBS is going to release a concert film of Nas, wait for it, performing Illmatic, the album, with an orchestra next month. Just in time for Black History Month, right, guys? <laughs> Yeah, why do they do all these special things for my people in February? Like, how come we can't get that right now? Like, how come we couldn't get that for MLK Day or something, you know? More on the music end, on the flip side. And I'm talking about Jay-Z. So apparently his 444 tour is his highest grossing solo tour and he has brought in close to, to $50 million for the tour. Good money, long money. And people were still talking about the the tour, saying that it wasn't selling well. And I was just thinking about where about? Because it's about every tour night, I feel like I saw it was sold out. And everybody was just in their feelings about this tour. But good to see he's out here making moves. Uh my favorite rapper of all time. Uh, yeah, that's we can talk about that later. A lot of people have a problem with that when I say that Jay-Z is, is my all-time favorite and I don't say Biggie or I don't say Tupac. But yeah, I won't talk about that now. Let's just move on. Um, the last thing I want to talk about and what's popping, I want to talk about Nelly. Now, Nelly, I won't say myself, I set that one out because there again, I have to stop acting like I was there and know the facts and know what's going on before I'm out here defending people I do not know. And so Nelly came out and said that prior when the situation first happened, 
that nothing happened and all this stuff. So, you know, the way we heard the story from Nellie's voice, it was like he did nothing wrong. Now, mind you, Nellie is in a relationship. And I'll tell you why that's important. So we learned this week that Nellie admits to having consensual sex with a woman accusing him of rape. And number one, rape is a serious accusation. And, you know, you can go to, I think, the stories on Baller Alert or the Shade Room and get the details of what allegedly he said to her and everything. I'm not going to go through all the detail. But in a time where we have all these women coming out saying they have been sexually abused or harassed. And why is it hard? I'm not going to say just men and put all y'all in a box because there's some good men in the world uh but why is it so hard for for men to be number one faithful number two just period like keep your dick in your pants and mind your business and you know like i get it this tour life and all the stuff you out here but i feel like if you're in a relationship and you've been in the game this long. When are you going to stop getting caught up in these situations? When are you going to stop? Because, you know, you have a beautiful girlfriend. So why are you out here still running through groupies? And let me take back that word group groupie. Because I don't know if she's a groupie or not. If she was just there and just chilling. We don't know the dynamics on how she got on that tour bus. And so I just don't understand why it's so hard. And, you know, the conversations that I have with my guy friends, they all try to put it on that mentality of, you know, it's just in our DNA to to want to be with a lot of females. They blame it on wanting to, to procreate all the time and, you know, just wanting to spread their seed. And so if, a female is willing, and in some cases not willing, with some of these guys, they're going to take their shot, basically. And that bothers me because, you know, Nellie came out immediately and said he didn't rape her. That's fine. I'm fine with that. But you had other people standing for you, and now it comes back that you had consensual sex with her and that's all fine and dandy but I'm looking at the moral compass of your girlfriend at home thinking everything's okay and has stood by you even through this shenanigans and so I don't know I think I'm gonna have to bring my best friend on the show or another guy I just really want to have a good talk, maybe even a debate about the dynamics of how men just operate in general. I will say through all of these sexual allegations that have been coming out, me and my best friend, we have definitely had good dialogue about just dealing with females in general. And, you know, I even said to him, like, I could get how sometimes you can get confused, like. And I just think like even, you know, now with all these accusations, like as a man, you're really, you're really going to have to be on your P's and Q's and make sure that the female you're with is really with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the way you've been operating is not going to work, especially if you are famous. You're going to have to change the way you work and deal with women. Now let's jump over to my second love, basketball. And you know I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about these Rockets and the Clippers. I'm going to talk about that. 
But first, I want to go over the standings really quickly so we all know what's going on with my Rockets, of course, but just in general. Um, my Rockets were the second in the West. Warriors are number one, and now it's a nice little gap between us and the, the Warriors. We're number two, the Spurs, number three, nice little gap in between the Spurs. And this is shocking and new. Um, Timberwolves are number four. Thunder, they have made their way up to number five. Portland, number six. And Pelicans, they made a jump. Number seven, and the motherfucking Clippers that I hate. <sighs> They're eight. So that means we still wouldn't see them in the first round. So if we started today, we would see the Pelicans in the first round, which I'm fine with that. Of course I'm fine with that. I'm um, definitely happy about how everything is going in the East. Boston is still holding it down at number one. Raptors, number two, even though they're a quiet number two. Cavs, number three, and that's a big jump from, from one to three as far as like how many games separate them. Miami is number four. Uh, Washington, D.C. is number five. Pacers, number six. A quiet six. We don't hear about them a lot. Bucks, number seven. And Philly, number eight. So, Boston and Philly. Philly's probably going to get swept, right, if they play today. And so, now we know the standings. Let's get to the shenanigans. And the shenanigans, I mean, my Rockets versus the Clippers and unfortunately it was like the day i came back from dallas and i could not stay up to watch this game i knew it was going to be a game because of course you have chris paul going back to where he's been a nice bulk of his time at the clippers and so basically from what i've read and seen that they just had a time like the whole game like talking mess the whole time and so it gets elevated and so, get to the end of the game, and allegedly, they had Capella go knock at the door of the Clippers' uh, locker room, and apparently, the secret <laughs> back way to the locker room, which they say is not a secret, that they use it anyway, but how the media spend it, or spun it, uh, it was a secret back way to their locker room, and four Rockets players, or was it four? I don't know who all it was. It was Chris Paul, James Harden, uh, Green, and I can't think of anyone else. And so allegedly they went there. The door got slammed in Capella, Capella's face the way the story was told. And, you know, even with Harden not being active in the game, he was about that life. And so nothing happened. Security was called and they were escorted out before anything could happen. And in the aftermath, former Houston Rocket, Patrick Beverly, which, you know, we just we just gave you a nice little video when y'all came to Houston to honor you. And you said this. And before I say what he said... Patrick Beverly is always looking to fight. And I know this because I'm a Houston Rocket fan. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. Because sometimes I feel like he's too extra. But I still love you, Beverly. And he said this. It's a different culture in L.A. No more soft shit here. Well, Patrick, what are you talking about? Who's soft? Who are you talking about? You've been over there five minutes and... You already feel like you can speak on the culture? And what are we saying as far as the culture? Are we saying that when you say no more soft shit here, that you mean that means you're ready to fight a better team? <laughs> like, I don't understand what you're saying. Like, I just feel like it was unnecessary. Like, I feel like it's one of those situations where you just sit that shit out. How about that? If we talking about shit, like, you should just be minding your P's and Q's. And maybe like try to be the in-between person to all this madness that went on that night. And when Chris Paul was asked about it, he was like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> and I really don't remember Chris Paul having this little chip or attitude that he has 
Now, let me let me roll it back. 99% of the time, nice guy. But when he's fired up about something that when he's mad, it's a different Chris Paul. Like, this Chris Paul is mean. He's mean. And so, I think I can halfway believe when people say that he's, I won't, well, people are, people have said that he's difficult to work with. And I don't think that about him. So, I want to make that clear. I like Chris Paul. I'm on Chris Paul's team, right? But... I like the mean side of Chris Paul. It's really swaggy to me. I don't like to use that word. (laughs) But his mean side is swag. And so Ariza and Green are suspended for two games. So they won't be playing against Golden State tomorrow. So that will be their second game. And I just think like, I don't like how the media like just beefed up everything. Like they made it like deeper than what it was. If nothing really happened, according to Ariza, when they asked him about it last night um, when we played the Timberwolves and won. Uh, Another rumor going around, they're saying it's a possibility that we could get DeAndre Jordan. And I'm not with it because. He is not loyal. Like, I disliked how he did the Dallas Mavericks. I just thought that was just totally unprofessional. And they say that he could be coming here because of Chris Paul, which makes sense or whatever. But, no. I like Capella. Capella is on the upside. He's still young. And he's having a phenomenal season this year. So I just don't want for the Rockets to make that mistake of where we build up these good players like how we did Aaron Brooks and stuff. And then we let him go. And then nine times out of ten when we let him go, they end up not being as good as when they were with the Rockets. So I don't want that to happen. I like my squad the way it is. Squad, squad. And that's where I met with it. On the petty side of the NBA, we have to talk about Isaiah Thomas and the whole Paul Pierce thing. Paul Pierce did not want for Isaiah Thomas to have his his video honoring him for the time that he played with Boston being played during his um during his night that his jersey is being retired. And I thought, how selfish of you. Mr. Pierce and this is the side of Paul Pierce that I do not like and I'm just like what a hater move because a hater move for him and piss poor planning for whoever plans that in the NBA um how come he couldn't be honored on a different day already because, I mean, he's already been back to Boston. So, how come he couldn't be honored then? So, I feel like it's a little shaky baking that's going on. And I feel like Paul Pierce is feeding into that. And basically, Isaiah Thomas was a bigger person. And he said, basically, he appreciates the the thought. Um, but he doesn't want to be honored the same day that they're doing the Paul Pierce jersey retiring. And so... That's that. And so the last thing I want to talk about as far as NBA, All-Star Game is coming up in February. And so the voting has ended uh, for the players. And so now we know who the starters are going to be for each side and also the captains. Um, For the East, uh, Kyrie Irving, DeMar DeRozan, LeBron James, he's also the captain, uh, the Greek freak, because I can't say his name, and Joel Embiid. And I feel like this is a good mixture. It's not like your typical list besides like LeBron. So I'm good with this for the East. Um, On the West, we have Steph Curry, who is also the captain. My boy, James Harden, Mr. MVP this season. I don't care what y'all say. Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins. I like that. And I think the West is going to take it. And so, so yeah, 
And so, good week for basketball. Last week was just a beautiful week. And so, yeah, that's all I have for y'all this week. Kind of short and sweet, even though I'm I'm running up on the one-hour mark. Um, There again, y'all, this is a little family. Let's keep it growing. Um, The numbers are growing still. Email me comment on the podcast what do you want to hear from me what do you want me to talk about do you need advice on anything have questions about myself so you can email me if you want to ask me questions i'll answer questions about myself on the podcast too it can be personal if it's too personal i'll let you know and i just there again i want this to be an open community and family and so if you're not following me on social media Please follow me. Follow me on Twitter, Pretty and Smart 81. That's pretty, the letter N, Smart 81. That's Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Oh, you thought Fallon. You spell my name F A L L O N. And being at work and talking on the phone a lot, I never understand how people think that I'm saying Valerie when my name is Fallon. It's, it's pretty crazy. Okay, so I said IG, uh, go to my website, outhoughtfallon.com, and get your life fully together. What else, what else, what else? I feel like I'm forgetting something. My email address is outhoughtfallon at gmail.com. And that's it. I hope y'all have a great weekend. If you're in Houston and you're a basketball fan, I'm going to be at the Golden State game tomorrow night, so... If you listen to the podcast, tell me hi if you recognize me. Um, Just have a great weekend and I will be talking to y'all next week. Bye. Until next time, remember to glow up, bless up, stay prayed up, and hold it down. Hold it down. Hold it down. We gon' hold it down. We gon' hold it down